Good morning. Welcome to the 2021 Remembrance Day service here in Leduc. Hosted by the Leduc Branch Number 108 of the Royal Canadian Legion and the Ladies Auxiliary. My name is Linda Cuppins and I'm the Branch President. It is my pleasure to lead the ceremony this morning. Thank you to everyone who is joining us online. These are challenging times to navigate and with the coronavirus we felt this was better to reduce the chances of community transmission. Also thank you to the McLab Centre for Performing Arts here in Leduc for supporting the technical details for this broadcast. And a huge thank you to all of our volunteers who are committed to ensure there is a ceremony on Remembrance Day. Like last year, we are being intentional and maintaining the usual format for the ceremony, minimizing the number of changes and maintaining the objective, which is to honor and remember Canada's fallen veterans and to help ensure Canadians never forget. Let us begin. We'll start with a land acknowledgement and then the singing of O Canada. I respectfully acknowledge that we are in Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Plains Cree, the Woodland Cree, the Beaver Cree, the Sotu, the Blackfoot, Métis, and Nakota Sioux peoples. I offer this acknowledgement in the spirit of inclusion as part of our call to action for truth and reconciliation and to provide a special acknowledgement for the Indigenous veterans in our community. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide o oh canada we stand on God for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, stand on guard for thee. On behalf of all of us today, thank you to those who have served. Thank you to those of you who are still serving our country at home and abroad, in the Canadian Armed Forces and in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We also take this time to acknowledge and thank those who serve our communities every day. The correctional officers, the Alberta sheriffs, the peace officers, firefighters, emergency services personnel, and first responders. Thank you, thank you all. At this time, I will introduce our dignitaries who are participating in today's service. Representing the Member of Parliament, for Edmonton Wetaskiwin, Mr. Mike Lake. Representing the member of the Legislative Assembly for Leduc Beaumont and the Provincial Liaison for the Canadian Armed Forces, Mr. Brad Rutherford. Mayor of the City of Leduc, Mr. Robert Young. Mayor of Leduc County, Ms. Tani DeBlanco. Officer in charge of the Leduc Detachment, Inspector Jeff Macbeth, President of the Leduc Branch Number 108 Ladies Auxiliary, Madame Bonnie Scott, and Chaplain Reverend Retired Susan Ormsby. 
It is also our pleasure to have the following with us today, providing the music for the service. The Leduc Fire Services Pipes and Drums Band, led by Jerry Kelly. Trumpeter Alex Milne, and leading the anthems, Joanne Jansen. I invite our guests to come forward for a few words of welcome and reflection, starting with Member of Parliament, Mr. Mike Lake. Sir. During the First World War, the Great War as it was known then, nearly one in 10 Canadians served, and of that number, nearly one in 10 lost their lives. A great many more returned with physical, mental, and emotional scars that would remain with them throughout their lifetimes. Canada's enormous contribution to that war effort was recognized around the world and led to substantially greater national autonomy and international influence. Much of the Canada we know today can trace its roots to our courage and commitment during the four years between 1914 and 1918. In 1921, the Canadian Parliament passed legislation recognizing what was then called Armistice Day, which would be observed on the Monday in the week of November 11th. Interestingly, for the first decade, Armistice Day was combined with what was then the Thanksgiving holiday in Canada. In 1931, Parliament moved Thanksgiving to its current weekend in October and declared that the newly named Remembrance Day would be observed each year on November 11th. Of course, just a decade later, Canada found itself in the midst of another world war, recent enough that today, some veterans of that war are still alive and many Canadians have heard stories directly from those who served. Over our history, more than 2.3 million Canadians have served our country during times of war, conflict, and peace, through two world wars, and in South Africa and Korea, Cyprus and the Gulf, the Balkans and Rwanda and Afghanistan, among countless critical missions. More than 118,000 of those who have served have given their lives for the rights and freedoms that we enjoy in our country today. While it's important that the act of solemn remembrance be given its own day, it's also somewhat fitting in the early, that in the early days, that remembrance occurred in conjunction with the giving of thanks. Remembrance is about the past. It's an act of reflection, not only on the moments when lives ended in sacrifice for our nation, but on those lives themselves and the individuals who lived them. They were people just like us, with dreams and potential, with family and friends, with strengths and challenges. They deserve to be remembered. Gratitude is about the present. Gratitude today for those who sacrificed their lives and futures for our rights and freedoms. A recognition today that those rights and freedoms come with responsibilities, including and especially the responsibility to build a country greater than the one we inherited. A country where every Canadian has the opportunity to thrive and contribute. Gratitude helps turn remembrance into action action which honors the memory of those we've lost and the contributions of the men and women who serve today. So to those who have served or continue to serve our great nation, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. As a nation, we are forever grateful for your service. Next, I invite the member of the Legislative Assembly for Leduc Beaumont and the military liaison for the government of Alberta, Mr. Brad Rutherford, to come forward. Today we remember the courage, valor, and dedication of Canadians who fought tenaciously in the defense of our freedom. These brave men and women who made it possible for all of us to live in peace, enjoying all the pleasures that come with living in a democratic nation. For over a century, hundreds of thousands of Canadians have earned great respect both at home and abroad, through fighting against evil and tyranny around the world. From World War I and World War II, the Korean War in Afghanistan, and many other military operations, the Canadian Armed Forces have been there to stand up against those who threaten our values and our way of life. In fact, many Canadians who served are still honoured in the countries and the battlefields that they served. Places like Vimy Ridge, Ypres, Normandy, Sicily, and Korea 
These also include the monuments around the world, like the Liberation Forest, where 30,000 maple trees were planted in 1995 to honour the 50th anniversary of the liberation of the town of Groningen, or the Juno Beach Memorial and Centre in Normandy, the Passchendaele Museum and Memorial in Belgium. I bring these up because it is a mark of appreciation and thanks of nations that Canada has defended and liberated. However, these are not the only marks of remembrance for the fallen. The poppy has long been a symbol of remembrance, and this year marks the 100th anniversary of that symbol. While the poppy was first introduced to Canada by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, the idea of making the poppy a symbol of remembrance was brought forward by Madame Anna Guerin of France. She was inspired by McRae's poem in Flanders Field, which is a beautiful piece that recognizes the tragedy of death and battle, yet still marking the beauty of each grave. We, were, we wear the poppy every year as a reminder to remember Canada's fallen. And as the military liaison for the government of Alberta, I want to thank the Royal Canadian Legion, in particular the Duke Branch 108, for everything that they have done to honour and mark the sacrifice of those who have fallen. And I want to thank all of those who are currently serving and their families for their dedication to our country, lest we forget. Your Worship, Mayor Bob Young, I invite you to bring greetings on behalf of the City of Leduc. Mayor. Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Bob Young from the City of Leduc. On behalf of Leduc City Council, I want to say thank you for joining us today as we pause and reflect on the sacrifices that have been made for our freedoms. Remembrance Day is an important day in Canada each year and in each and every community across the country. At 11 a.m., people from coast to coast will stand in silence as they pay tribute to those who have given their lives on our behalf. Honouring this moment of silence is something that unites us in our remembrance. This year, we are proud to recognize the 100th anniversary of the poppy and all that it represents in our country. Wearing the poppy is a century-long tradition that is part of who we are as Canadians. It is a beautiful symbol that will help make sure that we never forget, and it provides an opportunity to teach our younger generations about those who have come before them. Earlier this month, I gathered with local students at the Leduc Cemetery for a No Stone Left Alone ceremony and was moved by their participation in laying poppies on the graves of soldiers who are laid to rest in our community. No matter where you're watching from today, Thank you for taking time to pause and pay respect to surviving veterans, those who have fallen in the line of duty, and all those who continue to defend our country. Thank you. I invite Inspector Jeff Macbeth of the Leduc Detachment of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to come forward for a few words of welcome and reflection. Inspector Macbeth. Good morning, and thank you for the privilege of being here today on this special day every year when we take the necessary time to remember those who have sacrificed for our freedom. Remembrance Day means so much to so many, but to me, I feel it means service to others. When I think about what service to others means, I think about the men and women who went to war to defend a country. I think about those who are currently defending our country and those who are going to be defending our country in future years, all done in the service to others. Remembrance Day is a time when I think of my grandfather who defended his country of England, or my mother and father who served in the Canadian Armed Forces in the Royal Canadian Navy. Their service is the number one reason that I am honoured to follow in their footsteps and serve our country here at home. For the past 22 years of my service with the RCMP, I made a promise to not miss one Remembrance Day ceremonies regardless of what duties I was working, a promise that I have kept true. The, this commitment is an important part of service to others. Thank you is a small, simple act to everyone who has provided us with the very freedom that gives all of us the privilege of living in a free country. On this day, I always find myself looking around at the veterans so proudly in their uniforms, their medals so proudly displayed, and wonder 
What sacrifices each man and woman went through to defend our freedom. Service to others. Young men and young women going into battle with nothing expected in return for defending this incredible country. It is so important for our youth to never lose sight of the huge debt that we owe our servicemen and women. Remembrance Day is incredibly important to never ever forget these heroes who paid the ultimate price. G.K. Chesterton once said, the true soldier fights not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. To everyone who is a veteran, currently serving, or the relative of a veteran, on behalf of everyone at the Leduc RCMP Detachment, thank you so very much, lest we forget. Next, I invite Madame Bonnie Scott to bring greetings on behalf of the Ladies Auxiliary. Madame Scott. On this Remembrance Day, join the ladies of the Ladies Auxiliary of the Royal Canadian Legion in honouring our fallen men and women who sacrificed their lives so courageously for our freedom. Let the legacy of our heroes' memories inspire a better tomorrow. To all who are serving and who have served, we keep you close to our hearts, lest we forget. Let us all pause and reflect as Reverend Ormsby delivers the invocation. Reverend Ormsby. We have gathered here today to recognize the sacrifices of our Canadian Armed Forces, RCMP members, and first responders who have offered themselves in service to our country. Through world wars and regional conflicts, at home and abroad, they have demonstrated courage, loyalty, integrity, and service to Canada before self. The freedoms re we enjoy today would not be possible without them. At the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the guns fell silent on the Western Front to bring an end to the First World War. Our nation has recalled that moment through our remembrance events throughout the ensuing decades. Decades during which the men and women of our armed forces and emergency services have continued to pay the ultimate sacrifice. We stand here today to remember the lives sacrificed in the service of our country and communities and those traumatized and injured. May we have such a devotion to justice and freedom that the heroism of all who served and still serve may continue to be remembered in a nation of service and in a world of peace. A reading from Ecclesiastes. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence 
and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Amen. 2021 is the 100th anniversary of the red poppy as a symbol of remembrance. I ask Major Philip Parody to provide a reflection. Major Parody was born and raised in Leduc and is currently serving in the Canadian Armed Forces. Good day. This year we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the poppy as the official symbol of Remembrance Day. The Remembrance Poppy came to be as a result of the enormous loss of life in the Great War. The poppy, incredibly, was the first thing to grow in the blasted and destroyed landscape, which would later inspire the Canadian Army doctor, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, to pen a poem about the devastation we now famously know as In Flanders Field. Madame Anna Guerin, who heard John McRae's In Flanders Fields at a convention for your veteran support, had an idea. To adopt the distribution of the poppy on Armistice Day, which was the precursor to today's Remembrance Day. This was a way to raise money for veterans' needs and to remember those who gave up, who had given their lives during the First World War. She would be christened the Poppy Lady from France for her endeavors to support World War I veterans through the Poppy. In July of 1921, the Great War Veterans Association, which in 1925 would unify with other veterans groups to form the Canadian Legion, because of Madame Guerin, they adopted the Poppy as a flower of remembrance. Initially, disabled veterans assembled the poppy from cloth and later plastic until 1996. From 1980 to 2002, poppy centers were green. The color reverted to black to better represent the color of the poppies in Flanders fields. I have participated in every facet of the poppy campaign and have witnessed the positive impacts that poppy funds have had in our community. First, as a youth in First Leduc Scouting and later as an A31 Leduc Royal Canadian Air Cadet helping raise funds for the Poppy Campaign, then donating yearly as an adult, and now through First Lady Scouting as a scout leader, we continue the fundraising tradition with our youth. I've watched these funds go to improve youth programming and rewards and awards for Remembrance Week's poems and art contests. Most recently, while I was volunteering as a Legion Branch 108 service officer, I had the privilege to help out two different veterans with Poppy funds who found themselves in a place where they could not support themselves. This fundraising and our community support across our great nation is bar none, one of the most amazing things I've been a part of, to support our veterans, their families, and our communities. The years and society's views of the poppy have not always been kind. Some see it as a symbol that glorifies and celebrates war. Having deployed and, have, and having had to organize the repatriation ceremonies for soldiers' remains, and, the attempt, and attending ramp ceremonies, I will tell you that the farthest thing from how your Canadian Armed Forces views the Poppy and Remembrance Day. It is a solemn and off difficult day for veterans and serving members of the Canadian Armed Forces. The loss of life and the cost of war is difficult to bear for many. However, Remembrance Day, as advertised, is just that, a day to reflect on sailors, soldiers, and aviators' sacrifices then and now. Remembrance Day has been a part of my life as far back as I can remember first as mentioned through scouting and later as an air cadet. Currently, in over almost 30 years, I've participated as an officer in the Canadian Armed Forces. As a boy, my parents told me of my grandfather, grandmothers, great uncles and aunts who participated in World War II in the service as, or as farmers, volunteers or tradesmen to support the war effort. I learned of their sacrifice and of even their regrets due to various combat-related stress injuries and the inability to reintegrate easily back into peacetime life. Today, we know them to be PTSD or OSIs. For the first time in our history, we are trying to openly talk about these issues. I had deployed to Afghanistan for the War on Terror in 2008, then deployed to Egypt on the 30-plus year peacekeeping mission between Egypt and Israel in 2012. Most recently, I deployed on a NATO mission to stand up a NATO headquarters in Tallinn, Estonia, to coordinate if needed, a NATO response in 2016. Because of these deployments, I was able to travel parts of Africa, Europe, the Middle East, and North America, and the people remember Canadians. They know our generosity, our willingness to help, and they have seen our commitment to a better world. The Canadian Armed Forces get to wear our, our flag on our shoulders every day 
and our biggest hope is that we are able to represent our country as well as our forebears have. I have, however, struggled with my own demons and had to really look in the mirror at the person I had become. Sadly, it took too long and I lost a relationship because of not facing those demons. I realized I was not alone, however, because of Remembrance Day, talking with and really listening to other veterans and first responders. I learned that stepping forward and asking for help would be the hardest battle I'd ever be in. However, the rewards for standing up, brushing myself off, and seeking out help would change the path I came to walk. So Remembrance Day for me is that time for personal reflection on the past, to try to understand our present, and hope for the future. It is a solemn day, a day of mourning for families, friends, and my brothers and sisters in arms. For not only the loss of life, but for the loss of those men and women who came back just a little bit different. And at the same time, it is a celebration of life that we currently have because of those that went before us who stood up and said, this is not right. I am profoundly grateful for their sacrifice and proud of all of us as we keep the torch lit and remembrance alive within our communities. So the poppy for me is the symbol to help remember the sacrifice of our families, our military, our veterans, and really the whole of Canada. Finally, the poppy really symbolizes hope. Hope that we remember our past sacrifices and tragedies of war. Hope that we as a society get better and do better. Hope that families never have to feel the worry for or loss of their loved ones. The poppy serves to remind us that when we all pitch in a little, even if it's just donning that little red flower, our contributions can and do make amazing things happen. Truly, I hope, because of the poppy and Remembrance Day, that one day we will all come to understand one another a little bit better than before, lest we forget. At 11 o'clock on the 11th day of the 11th month, veteran Alex Milne, the bugler, will commence the last post. Following that, there will be two minutes of silence and then the bagpiper will play a lament, which will be followed by the bugler playing Reveille. During this portion of the ceremony, I ask that you pause and remember all veterans, not only those we have lost, but also those that remain, and the thousands of families who have made countless sacrifices during and after the service of their loved ones. Bugler, Please commence with the last post.
they shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Members of the first Leduc Cubs will recite in Flanders Field. And members of the first Leduc Scouts will recite Remembrance Day, a poem by Ashley Baldo. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. The mark our place, and in the sky, the larks so bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. Remembrance Day, a poem by Ashley Baldo. Remembrance Day, what do you think of when you hear those words? You might say poppies, or soldiers, or war. And I think those things too. But do those words have the same meaning to you as they do to others? Do those words carry an underlying message to you? Or are they just the soldiers, the poppies, the war? To be honest, I never really gave Remembrance Day much thought. At celebrations, we would all wear poppies, listen to in Flanders Field, have a minute of silence, but I never gave it much thought. On November 7th, our grade nine ambassadors, including me, went to a no stone left alone ceremony at one of the local cemeteries here in Edmonton. There, we met two soldiers who led us through the ceremony and shared their experiences. And honestly, I thought it was going to be the same old thing, but I was wrong. Being there, seeing all those gravestones, really opened my eyes. The poppies we place on those graves were not just poppies. They were a symbol of hope for the future. And now, they're a symbol to remind us to remember to remember the soldiers, to remember their sacrifice. And those soldiers, they were not just soldiers. They were also ordinary people like you and me, who sacrificed their lives for us, for our freedom. They had families and friends and hobbies, just like everyone else but they left all of that to fight for our country. And war, it is not just war. It is a barrier, separating families, separating countries. It is sadness and it is suffering that pushes itself into people's lives to create an enormous misery that brings the world down. And for some, this feeling does not leave. It is a mistake, a grave idiotic human mistake that must be remembered, even if it hurts to do so. Because if we remember, the suffering, the separation, the sadness, the sacrifice, if we remember them, then maybe we'll be able to pre prevent the repetition of past mistakes. If we remember, we can honor those soldiers and their sacrifice. If we remember, then maybe there is hope for a better future. And if we remember, it has to start one stone at a time. Leduc Branch No. 108 of the Royal Canadian Legion is proud to support the local Leduc Fire Services Pipes and Drums Band. After organizing only four years ago, this amazing group has trained and performed at many local functions, including the rededication of the T-33 airplane a couple of years ago. We are proud of all you do in this community to keep us safe while on duty with the Fire and Emergency Services and to entertain us when you are off duty. Thank you. The band will perform a medley of songs while the dignitaries are laying the memorial wreaths.
Thank you to everyone who has supported the Poppy Campaign and Remembrance Day ceremony this year. This service will end with a benediction, followed by God Save the Queen and the closing. Reverend Ormsby. And now, as we have remembered and honoured, we prepare to go back to our everyday lives. In the quiet of our own hearts, let each of us call on the one who created us, who is great and gentle, firm and forgiving, holy and healing. You who created us, who sustain us, who call us to live in peace, hear our prayer this day. Hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in the service of others and accept the gift of their sacrifice. Help us to shape and make a world where we will lie down the arms of conflict and turn our weapons into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. Comfort those who grieve the loss of loved ones and let your healing be the hope in our hearts. Hear our prayer this day and in your mercy answer us in the name of all that is holy. Amen. God save our gracious Queen. Long live our noble Queen. God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save the Queen. I now declare this service closed lest we forget.